Good evening, all of you. Let us begin with the today's daily news analysis. Uh, that is 28th of March, 2023. And uh, let's have a look at the today's editorials. So today we are going to discuss a very important uh, topic uh, that is G20 vision for uh, ocean commons, okay? So we are going to discuss uh, in depth uh, this entire topic. Uh, the editorial's headline is a shared G20 vision for the ocean commons, okay? So let us try to understand what is the context of this uh, editorial. So uh, this editorial, it tries to highlight the significance of oceans. Okay, So significance of the marine ecosystem, significance of the ocean resources, it's being highlighted into this article. Okay, Now, what are the further things which are being highlighted into this article? So uh, we all know that the, uh, like repetitively we have been studying that India holds the G20 presidency this year. So article gives certain... Uh, facts with regards to this uh, presidency and the G20 countries. So article says that together G20 countries, they account for 45% of the world coastlines. Okay, so together, if we sum up all the G20 countries, uh, they account for 45% of the world coastline and 21% of the exclusive economic zones. Okay, and when we do, and this uh, article mainly highlights the importance of oceans. So it talks about oceans as the reservoir of global diversity, oceans as the regulator of climate and weather, and oceans being the supporters of the well being of the billions of people in the coastal area okay so this is the main theme of this article where it tries to highlight the significance of oceans okay so this is all about the context of this article now we are going to understand uh, the theme that is the important uh, uh, principle that is what do you mean by blue economy and what are the different initiatives taken by the government of india in order to promote this blue economy okay so i'll be uh, shifting towards the presentation i'll just open the presentation all right okay now first of all when we talk about uh, this topic okay blue economy so we'll be understanding what is the definition of blue economy so a World Bank has given the definition of blue economy. So blue, econo blue economy, it's basically sustainably you are using the resources of ocean, okay? So sustainably we are using the ocean resources and these uh, resources will be helpful for improving the livelihood of the people. They will be helpful for the economic well-being of the people. And for definitely uh, like the basic goal of this blue economy is what using the things sustainably so that it can be even used for the future generations. Okay, so I'll be sharing just I'll be shifting towards the slideshow. Fine. So first of all, let us try to understand the concept of uh, blue economy. Okay, so according to World Bank, blue economy is defined as sustainable development of ocean resources. Okay, so first of all, what is the meaning of sustainable development whenever we talk about the term sustainable development what does it mean so sustainable development simply means that okay, you have to use resources in a such a way that okay, even you are keeping them for the future generation it is not like that okay, you are just becoming selfish and you are using it and exhausting all the resources for yourself no sustainable development means what you have to use the resources carefully in a such a manner that even you are thinking of the future generation and you are keeping the resources available for the future generation as well okay so according to the world bank what is the definition of blue economy so blue economy is defined as a sustainable development of the ocean resources for the purpose of economic development, for improved livelihoods, and for the creation of the jobs. And while doing this, you are preserving the health of the ocean ecosystem. Okay, So whenever you are creating jobs, whenever you are deriving benefits from the economy, you have to ensure that whatever you are doing, you are maintaining the health of the ocean ecosystem. So this is the best definition of the blue economy as given by the World Bank. Okay. Now, what are the different components of the blue economy? So when I talk about the components of the blue economy, uh, the components are using smart shipping to lessen the impact on the environment, inclusive and uh, basically growth of all, harness the renewable energy, 
Then based on the sustainable fisheries, so we have studied even one lecture on fisheries, the different techniques. So even we are doing fisheries, it has to be done in a sustainable manner without ha having a much impact on the environment, creating jobs, reducing poverty, put an end to end hunger, conserving marine life and um, oceans. Apart from that, uh, protecting the coastal communities from the impact of the climate change and tackling the marine litter and ocean pollution, okay? So these are all the components of your blue economy. So blue economy, it's a sustainable development of the ocean resources for economic growth, improved livelihood and jobs. While doing this, you have to preserve the health of the ecosystem. And whatever development you are doing, try to do in an environmentally friendly way, okay? So these are the different components of the blue economy. Now let us try to understand what are the initiatives that are being taken by the government of India in order to promote this blue economy. So the very first and the most important project that is being highlighted into this editorial is your Sagar Mala project. Okay, So Sagar Mala project, this uh, has been initiated by the government of India once it was approved by the union cabinet in 2015. So this scheme was introduced in the year 2015. The basic intention of Sagar Mala is port-led development, okay? So port-led development in India. We all know that India has a very big coastline of approximately 70, 7,500 kilometers, okay? So we need to use this in a productive way. We have 12 major ports in India and numerous small ports. Apart from that, we have nine states sharing the coastline. So nine coastal states are there in India, plus uh, more than... 1300 islands are there in India. So this is a very rich marine system economy that we have in India and we have to harness the benefits of it. Okay. So Sagar Mala, it's basically port-led development where the intention is that we need to unleash the economic potential of 7,500 kilometer long coastline of India. Okay. Apart from that, it also tries to boost infrastructure for logistic purpose, okay? Uh, so what are the components of this Sagar Mala project? So port-led development, port modernization. So first of all, whatever ports we have, as I've mentioned, 12 major ports and several minor ports are there. First of all, we need to augment their capacity, renew them, and also we have to add new ports. Then port connectivity. Now the biggest issue is that ki, even though we have a very well-developed ports, so uh, the good Goods ka import and export is happening with the help of uh, uh, the ports. But the issue is that what after ports? You have to connect the ports with the roadways and the railways to the interiors of India, right? Once you are importing something, okay, once you are importing the products from any foreign country, they are coming to a very particular port, they are coming to Mumbai port, or they are coming to the Kandla port, JNPT port. So from there, they have to be transported to the internal parts of the country. For that, you require port connectivity, that is roads and railways. A robust infrastructure is required for the further port connectivity. So that is being highlighted over here. Port in this port led industrialization. So around the port areas, we need to enhance uh, industrial uh, clusters, we have to build uh, marine clusters and create employment opportunities. And finally, the development of the coastal community. Okay, so skill development, promoting uh, tourism into the coastal areas and enhancing the livelihood of the coastal community. This is your Sagar Mala project. One of the important projects in order to promote the concept of blue economy introduced in the year 2015. And the basic tagline of this project is port-led development. So we have to develop the ports, we have to develop the surrounding areas of the ports, and we have to develop the coastal community and create employment. Okay, So this is all about this Sagar Mala project. Now we are shifting towards the next important project, and that is Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sampadan Yojana. Okay, So this is again, Matsya means this is related to the fisheries. Okay, So this was launched in 2020. The aim of this particular uh, mission, Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sampadan Yojana, is to bring about a blue revolution in the field of fisheries, okay, to bring about a blue revolution through sustainable fisheries in India, okay. So that is uh, the tagline of this uh, program, to bring about a blue revolution through sustainable development of fisheries. And the scheme is for five years from 2020 till 2025, introduced in the year 2020, okay. So basically it was introduced in the union budget of 2019-2020, okay. So to bring about a blue, uh, blue revolution, 
to the sustainable development of fisheries. So establishment of a robust fisheries management framework to address whatever flaws are there in the value chain, enhancing the infrastructure, modernization, post harvest. So after the uh, fishes are extracted, okay, how to manage them, how to preserve them, how to maintain their quality, all this is being highlighted into this mission, okay. So what are the aims and objectives of this uh, mission, Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sampadan Yojana? So harnessing of the fishing uh, potential, enhancing of the fishing production and productivity, modernizing and strengthening of the, uh, of the value chain that is post-harvest management and quality improvement doubling the income of the fish farmers okay so fishers and who are also cultivating it artificially okay? so one is the marine one then you have the aquaculture which is there okay so uh, increasing their employment see this is a part of agriculture only so in a way agriculture ka contribution to gdp will increase and apart from that we are also trying to improve the livelihood conditions of the fish farmers okay so social physical and economic security for fishers and fish farmers robust fisheries management and regulatory network so just remember this the aim of the scheme is to boost the blue revolution in the country and promote fishing in the country okay so these are the certain targets uh, since the scheme is for 5 years 2020 to 2025 Expected investment is 20,000 crore, okay? The biggest target over here is doubling the fishers and the fish farmers. Uh, then you have Sagar Mitra. Uh, Sagar Mitra, it's a uh, to register. Uh, Sagar Mitra is basically, these are the people who will be providing you with the inputs, with the assist, uh, assistance, okay? Uh, with respect to this scheme and overall, whatever developments are there. So Sagar Mitra will be uh, giving you the uh, information. And then you have to enhance the fish production to... Uh, just a second, someone has got the message. Acha, why this box is coming? Just a second, I'll just check it. All right, so this is about this entire mission, uh, Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sampadan Yojana. Okay, now coming to, uh, yeah, so to enhance the fish, uh, fish production to uh, 220 lakh million tons by 2024-25, okay? So these are the broad aims and uh, vision under this Pradhan Mantri Mansi Sampadan Yojana. Now coming to the next important thing, Sagar Mantan. So Sagar Mantan, so Government of India has launched this Sagar Mantan Mercantile Marine Domain Awareness. So basically this uh, uh, entire Sagar Mantan is with respect to real-time vessel tracking. Okay, so vessels are there, so they're tracking and to giving uh, to give the information to the seafarers with respect to the atmospheric conditions and all the oceanic conditions so all this information is being provided to the uh, 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 this uh, vessels okay so that is being provided by sagar manthan yet important initiative by government of india then the next important scheme uh, this is um, O smart okay so O smart this can be a preliminary question that O smart is related to which field okay so O smart that is ocean services modeling application resources and technology this is basically a very big umbrella program and this is under ministry of earth science okay so O smart it is re everything related to the ocean it is under this O smart it's an umbrella scheme for the development of the oceans and this is under uh, under the Ministry of Earth Science, okay? So it provides us ocean information services, technology for harnessing ocean resources, oceanic surveys are being done, and ocean research in the field of ocean is being done, okay? So it's an umbrella, a very big scheme under the Ministry of Earth Science, okay? Now, what are the uh, objectives? What are the benefits of this O-SMART scheme? Sustainable development of the oceans, that is a goal. Harnessing ocean resources and science and technology support to blue economy okay so these are the three important visions uh, benefits are like potential uh, they are trying to identify uh, by doing continuous survey and research they are trying to identify potential fishing zones and give, providing the required information to the fishermen then continuously giving the forecast with respect to the waves currents okay so that has been given to the fishermen early warning with respect to tsunami high wave alerts storm surge all this has been given for the uh, from the perspective of disaster management and specific services are also provided to the Indian Navy and Coast Guard. So OSMART, it's an umbrella program under Ministry of Earth Science with these objectives, okay? Uh, 
Now, a very important thing. Now, when, when I talk about uh, Indian marine resources, so India has been allotted 75,000 square kilometer in the central Indian Ocean basis, the basin. And this 75,000 square kilometer has been given to India by United Nations International Seabed Authority. Now, for what purpose this has been given to India? for the exploitation of the polymetallic nod nodules. Now, polymetallic nodules, these are basically uh, like these are balls, like these are nodules, and they contain uh, important minerals. They contain important metals. And these metals are extremely important, taking into consideration the energy requirement of India. So it is said that he just by utilizing 10% of the polymetallic nodules, we will be in a position that we can uh, fulfill the energy requirements of our country for next 100 years. Okay, So polymetallic nodules are very much important and India has been given uh, the access of 75,000 uh, square kilometer of the seabed in the central Indian Ocean basin by this international uh, United Nations International Seabed Authority. And this is extremely important. Okay, Now, with respect to this, India has now come up with a mission, and that is your deep ocean mission. Okay, now this is again a very important mission approved by a uh, deep uh, ocean mission approved by the Union Cabinet in 2021. Again, this mission is under your Ministry of Earth Science only. Okay, now what is the uh, significance of this mission? So, mission aims to explore the deep ocean. So, to explore the deep ocean, whatever resources are there, and develop deep sea technology for the sustainable use of ocean resources. Okay. So, two important uh, ideologies, uh, two important uh, things which are here are there that is exploring the deep ocean, and second thing developing the deep sea technologies okay a total 4077 uh, crore has been estimated as an expenditure for 5 years and it will be uh, it will be spent in a subsequent manner okay so further this mission tries to uh, create employment opportunities in the marine biology okay and uh, even promoting the growth of uh, uh, small scale industries, medium and the small scale industries, MSMEs and startup. Okay. Now, what are the main objectives of this uh, deep ocean mission? So, when I talk about the deep ocean mission, uh, it uh, tries to address the issues arising from the long term changes in the ocean due to climate change. It tries to develop technology for deep sea mission of living and non-living resources, develop underwater vehicles, underwater robotics, because it is impossible after a certain level, we cannot go into the ocean. So you require robotics, under vehicle, uh, underwater vehicles to go to the bottom and do the required research, then to provide ocean climate change advisory services, uh, technological innovations for sustainable use of resources, uh, also, one of the most important aim of this is to build desalination techniques. So to, we know that Israel, the, the country, leads into this desalination water plant. So they take the ocean water, can desalinize it, convert it into a water, drinking water. So India has a, such a big coastline. And definitely, if we have this technology that is developing desalination techniques, it would be really great for India to address the issues with respect to the drinking water. So that is, yes. Yet another important component of this mission, okay? Uh, then uh, to develop renewable energy generation techniques. So we know that tidal energy can be harnessed from here. And to provide clean drinking water and desalination, that is the main important thing, and extraction of minerals from the ocean bed. So just now I talked about the poly uh, metallic nodules. Okay, so polymetallic nodules that is being highlighted over here that we need to explore it because these are nodules, polymetallic nodules, and they contain important elements. Okay, so important elements that they contain are nickel, copper, cobalt, then lead, molybdenum, then it also uh, contains cadmium, cadmium. Titanium and vanadium. Okay, so these all components are there in this polymetallic nodules. And we saw that line, and that line is from PIB only that mentions that even if you're able to harness 10% of these polymetallic nodules, then also we will be in a position to fulfill the 100 years 
energy needs of India. So that also is one of the aim under this deep ocean mission that we even need to harness this. So two important things you can understand over here. One is the desalinization and second is harnessing the de, uh, the uh, polymetallic modules. Okay, So these are the important things under this mission. Talking about the next it's important thing. India is planning for Samudrayan, okay? That is India's first manned ocean mission, okay? That is being launched. And only selective countries have launched this Samudrayan. As of now, we have elite countries like we have USA, we have Russia, we have Japan, France, and China. These are the elite countries, those who had up till now uh, this manned ocean mission. And India has joined this elite club. So this is also a part of deep ocean mission only. Uh, 6,000 crore has been kept aside for this. And uh, uh, under this mission, Samudra Yan, three submarines, uh, sorry, a submarine will be sent with three persons. Okay, so three people will be there into this submarine. And this submarine will be going up to the depth of 6,000 meter. Okay, so they will uh, and they will be doing the research. They will be studying about the blue economy, the drinking water prospects. Okay, so basically the exploration will be done over here. And this is a very important component of your deep ocean mission. Okay, so remember this Samudra Yad, it's India's first manned ocean mission. And by launching this, India has joined the elite group of countries and it's a part of your deep ocean mission. And always remember that usually this, uh, uh, this missions which are related to deep ocean exploration and all, they are always under Ministry of Earth Science. Okay, so such missions if in prelims, sometimes they ask the question, this mission is under which ministry? So you should be in a position to answer that ki, this mission is with respect to the Ministry of Earth Science. Okay, such missions are usually under this ministry only. Further, the article talks about even the coastal regulation zone. Okay, so uh, now remember that ki, these coastal regulation zones, initially they were introduced in the year 1991 and they are in, uh, published by, they are issued by Ministry of environment and uh, this uh, climate change okay so that is being introduced by moefcc under which particular act under environment protection act of 1986 okay so this is important coastal regulation zones they come under which uh, act they come under environment protection act of 1986 and what is the mandate over here to protect the coastal areas okay so initially we had the rules in 1991 now in uh, uh, 2011, the new rules had been uh, notified. Okay, so basically, what is the perspective over here? They have categorized the areas. So, coastal uh, zone number one, number two, number three, number four, and in the respective zone, they have permitted certain activities and certain activities are not permitted. Okay, so to conserve and protect the coastal areas, to ensure the livelihood security to the fishing and local communities staying in the coastal area, and to promote. Uh, in the sustainable manner, the coastal ecosystem, taking into account the natural hazards and sea level rise. Okay, so these are the different things which are highlighted into this uh, today's article. So once again, just have a look at it. So we have uh, seen the important things. We have seen what is the concept of blue economy. We have seen its definition. What are the components of blue economy? Then Sagar Mala, a very important program uh, with risk and the tagline. Always remember, it's a port-led development. Then Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sampadan Yojana related to bringing a blue revolution into the country. Uh, respect to fisheries department. Okay, Sagar Mantra tracking the vessels. Then. O smart, very important, an umbrella scheme under Ministry of Earth Science. Then we have seen the most important one. Yeah. Then we have seen the importance of the polymetallic nodules. And we have seen that 75,000 square kilometer has been given to India for its exploration. And what is the significance of this? Okay. So there can be a preliminary question. What do you mean by polymetallic nodules? Which elements are there into this polymetallic nodule? So you should be knowing this. Then we have seen this important deep ocean mission under Ministry of Earth Science. And we have seen the important aspects of this mission and the Samudrayan. And finally, the article also talks about the measures taken by the government that is coastal regulation zone. Now we are going to understand certain recent developments Okay, that has happened in the field of uh, uh, this particular thing. Okay, So what are the recent developments uh, that we will be understanding? It's not given over here, but I want to um, highlight over here. This can These can be the preliminary questions. So I'll just try to write it down. Yes, so very first one is Green Fins Hub. I'll just move towards the, why I'm not able to write. 
just a second i'll just close this i don't know why i'm not able to share it fine i'll use the white board that would be better all right uh, now uh, talking about the recent developments uh, with respect to your current affairs into this field okay so when i talk about uh, green fins so this you can note it down green fins hub so green uh, uh, unep okay so unep along with uk based a uh, charity foundation that is called as uh, reef world foundation reef world foundation so uh, they have launched it and this is basically first ever ever global marine tourism uh, industry platform okay so basically we know that the marine industry like the tourism industry so different sports are associated with the marine tourism also right so we have the different uh, snorkeling diving that is being done scuba diving that is being done okay but whenever we are promoting marine tourism we should take utmost care that it does not have any impact on the resources okay so this is green fins hub it's a very important agreement entered by unap we know that what is unap united nations environment program uh, introduced in the year 1972 if you guys remember headquarters nairobi kenya the only organization whose headquarters it's not in united nation it, uh, sorry it's not in the developed country it is outside okay we have seen this stockholm conference took place indira gandhi attended it and we have seen that this organization was born in 1972 okay so unep and uk based reef world foundation they have entered into this uh, green uh, fins hub basically the intention is to promote the global marine tourism in a such a manner that it does not have impact on the oceanic resources okay so especially they are trying to uh, trying to control uh, the base spots which are related to the marine tourism okay so that is important then when we talk about the next important thing uh, the uh, that is a resolution that is being taken in order to so unep had a fifth session in march 2022 and in this session in march 2022 they took a resolution and that resolution is to end plastic pollution so this is also very much important resolution undertaken by a uh, unap in march 2022 and if you guys know that ki this march 2022 it was the 50th year of the formation of unep okay so 50 years were completed from the uh, right from the 1972 and it passed a very important resolution in order to end plastic pollution okay so this is with respect to the plastic plastic pollution fine so this also you need to remember yes plastic pollution yes plastic pollution now talking about the next important thing is your coming to india okay so india also we know that ki uh, ban has been introduced on the single use plastic so ban on single use sing uh, ban on single use plastic has been introduced in india also so uh, we have a very important organization uh, that is uh, the central pollution control board so central Co pollution control board it has introduced a ban on a single use plastics from 1st of july 2022 now this is very much important because we know that the finally this plastic also litters into the oceans and that affects uh, because fishes we are uh, we are understanding that they are consuming this uh, a uh, plastic bags and this is resulting into a big like issue and as a result it is very much important to put an end onto the single use plastic so in india so with adherence to uh, to the U unep unep launched it in uh, march 2022 took a resolution that we will be ending plastic pollution in, in, in india it was already going on and finally first july 2022 uh, central pollution control board passed a resolution that the single use plastic will be ended okay so that will be phased out now further they have given a criteria now what are the criteria the criteria are there any plastic bags which are uh, less than 120 microns okay they will be subsequently phased out from 31st december 2022 okay so further they have kept a criteria so single use will be eliminated right from 1st july itself and uh, 
UNEP, United Nations Environment Program. Okay, the full form of UNEP, UNEP is United Nations Environment Program, a very important organization in the field of environment. All right. Yeah. So we are talking about the plastic that so less than 120 microns will be phased out from the 31st December 2022. Okay. Uh, then also they are uh, introducing uh, restrictions like we have uh, earbuds. Earbuds have plastic. Okay. So we have to eliminate even that. Okay. So that has to be taken out. Plastic sticks have to be taken. Uh, should be eliminated. So even that has that all things are being given over here. Even the PVC banners which are less than 100 microns. Okay, so they are also not allowed to be used. So PVC banners less than 100 microns are not allowed to be used. So these are the important things. Now coming to, uh, we had on, on 5th of June every year, we celebrate World Env uh, Environment Day. So this year, a very significant thing that happened that we will be understanding in sync with this. So World Environment Day, 5th of June, all right. So a very important movement was launched by India. So if you guys can write in the chat box, it would be great if you remember which movement was launched by India on 5th June uh, this year. So a very important movement that was launched by India. Yes, guys, which movement? Lifestyle for environment. Lifestyle for environment. Okay. So your lifestyle should be in a such a way that it is in sync with the environment. Okay, so launched by India, a very important thing that you need to remember. Okay, lifestyle for environment. So basically, what is this lifestyle for environment? It means that okay, whatever, like the way you are behaving and all, whatever uh, things you are using resources, that should not have a drastic implications on the environment. Okay, so remember this lifestyle for environment movement was launched on 5th June, the World Environment Day by India. Okay. Uh, Apart from that, when we talk about um, mission life, okay, so this is also very important mission in, uh, given by India only. So mission life, this is same only, lifestyle for environment. So basically, at 2021, United uh, Nations uh, Framework Convention on Climate Change, Conference of Party 26. So we have seen this uh, uh, about UNFCC organization, we, we also know that the conference of parties. So this organization was born in 1992, right? We have seen this Earth Summit took place in 1992 at Rio de Janeiro. Three important organizations were born. Uh, United Nations Convention on Biodiversity, then UN, UNFCC, and one more organization to combat desertification. So uh, there was a conference of party 26 in 2021. Uh, in this conference of party, uh, Mr. Modi, our Prime Minister, announced that he we need, announced this mission life and he said that he, we need to bring about behavioral change. So behavioral change is very much important, okay, uh, in order to address the issue of climate change. Okay, so very important thing. He said that he, we, we should imbibe in ourselves environmentally conscious lifestyle. So this is a very important thing which he highlighted. Environmentally conscious behavior and lifestyle we need to adopt. Okay, So this was uh, given by our Prime Minister and he has also said about pro-planet people. So pro-planet people was the tagline given by our Prime Minister into this. Okay, So this is again very much important. And then India launched on 5th June. So this, this was the basic framework which in, Mr. Modi gave in 2021, and then India one joined, uh, sorry, launched Life uh, Global Movement. Life Global Movement. So on 5th June, that is the Environment Day 2022, India launched it. So uh, life, uh, basically, lifestyle for environment as a global movement was launched by India. Okay. So basically, uh, now what is the basic intention under this? life for uh, environment so in one of the sessions we have studied about the concept of circular economy so mr modi is highlighting this okay so as of now what we are taking we are using the things and we are discarding them we have even we have studied this concept with respect to electronics industry right we are using cell phones we are using laptops and laptops and what we are doing we are discarding them and these things contain what cancerogenic elements, arsenic is there, cadmium is there, mercury is there, lead is there. And we have also understood diseases with respect to those. Now, what Mr. Modi is saying that our lifestyle should be such that instead of use and dispose, use and dispose, recycle, reuse. 
circular economy focuses on recycle so recycle the things reuse the things okay that is the focus so that will help us to live in a sustainable manner okay so that is being highlighted so these are the important things that we all should know uh, that is about uh, uh, these important recent events that have happened okay so uh, we have discussed um, about all these things initiatives we now know what is blue economy we have seen all the uh, recent happenings okay so in recent happenings i highlighted about green fence hub that is you should know uh, to regulate the marine tourism industry okay then we have seen about unep plastic uh, to end the plastic resolution subsequently india also at the national level launched it and then we entered into the environment day significance where india launched lifestyle for environment and its background is mission life mission life was introduced by mr modi uh, at um, 20 uh, 2021 unfcc conference of party 26 where he talked about environmentally conscious behavior he talked about pro-planet people, okay? Pro-planet people is, is that people are such a way they're thinking about from the perspective of the survival of the planet, okay? And then uh, in 2022, fifth uh, World Environment Day, India launched Lifestyle for Environment, a global movement where India is talking about circular economy, okay? So this is all about the important uh, highlights uh, about uh, this uh, topic. Uh, now coming to the next uh, things, uh, few things which are pending very quickly yeah uh, understand so uh, the issues which are there okay so what are the threats to the marine um, ecosystem now we all know that uh, rising uh, temperature it's a threat for the survival of the marine ecosystem especially this is affecting the coral life right so ocean acidification it's yet another issue ocean acidification is there uh, then you have the issue like uh, uh, rise in the temperature of the ocean if the temperature of the ocean rises this will definitely have an impact on the marine ecosystem okay and especially it will threaten the coral reef and we know that coral reef it's like the most biodiverse area and increasing temperature and the changes in the ocean it is affecting the survival of the coral reef okay so these are the problems which are there also the problems are with respect to uh the pollution plastic pollution over extraction of the resources oil spills oil spills is yet another issue because what happened if there is an oil spill if uh, like if you're exploring an oil from the seabed and if we are not able to lock it if we are not able to lock it that oil what will happen it will spill out and it will form a thin layer on the ocean surface and what does oil do what does it do it blocks the entry of oxygen to the below marine life it will create a thin layer and because of that thin layer oxygen cannot enter below okay so oil spill is yet another issue which is happening repetitively in the different oceanic zones in the different oceanic areas that is again a threat to the marine life okay so in uh, ocean acidification rising sea level uh, oil spills pollution marine pollution okay so these are the different threats to the ecosystem and we have seen now all the important initiatives so what could be the future course of action uh, the article highlights that this year india has g20 presidency so india can use it in order to emerge as a global leader in uh, supporting the concept of blue economy okay and already we have seen the different uh, missions that are being introduced by the country okay i hope the topic is clear that's it for the day now we'll be moving towards the questions part uh, anything else that is uh, required one more thing i wanted to highlight just a second Yes, you guys can unmute yourself and if there are any questions, you can ask. Uh, apart from that, yeah, one more thing, um, just for the information, you should know that there is a Osaka declaration. If there is a question, okay, what is Osaka declarations? So you should know that uh, Osaka, uh, sorry, not declaration, Osaka Blue Ocean Mission, okay? So that also you know that because Osaka, Osaka declaration, it's related to digital technology also. So if Osaka declaration is there, it is related to the digital economy, Osaka declaration it is with respect to the digital economy this is different osaka blue ocean blue ocean vision is there okay so that is uh, uh, this at least terminology you should know if uh, there is a question and prelims what is Os osaka vision at least you should know that it is related to the oceans okay then you have uh, g20 ka uh, action plan is also there which gives a frame uh, uh, which gives a plan on marine litter 
how to handle the issue of marine litter. So this action plan is there. So there's two things also from the prelims perspective you should know. And you can put these things into your mains answer writing as well. Okay. Mm -hmm.